and when this woman did an internal exam, she said, well, you're not still bleeding. And she said that she found a small trace amount of blood. But basically, it was kind of like, since there wasn't gushing blood still, I was getting written off. But they decided to take about eight vials of blood from me. And for, you know, for something that's supposedly not a big deal, they took a ton of blood samples. And I remember um, they were all individualized. I'd, I think that I had never had, um, no, I had had a lot of blood taken from me before. But they took so many different samples, and then I thought that maybe they were testing for the poisoning. And then I later asked what had happened to all of the blood samples, because later I asked if any kind of a test for poisons or toxins had been done, and they said no. I said, so what was all, were, all, were all those blood samples for? And I was told, well, we did a CBC. I was told, I think, that they did two of these just kind of normal tests, like a CBC and then another standard blood test of some kind. And I said, well, what happened to all the other ones? And I was told that um, they just save them in case they have to use them for some reason. And then if they don't, they throw them out. And I knew after I saw where one of the doctors was from that they were not getting thrown out. But I was get, being defamed. And I remember when they took my blood in that instant and put it into all those tubes, my blood was totally different. It was coming out differently than um, I've had, like I say, I've had my blood drawn before. And when I've had my blood drawn in the past, um, I don't know how many people can relate to this because if you've ever seen vials of your own blood right after you've had a blood draw and looked at it, I mean, probably there's a little variation in different colors and different things and whether there are a lot of bubbles or not. But most of the time, my blood is usually pretty much standard one color from a blood draw. And it's also, it looks the same when it's being drawn, like that my blood typically will look um, the same in the vial. And I remember when they did took all these different blood samples, my blood, it looked, um, it was extremely bubbly. And I've been later, I've later been told that that indicates, I can't remember if it indicates the presence of more oxygen or less oxygen, or one of those gases, um, chemicals or compounds or whatever. But it was extremely um, bubbles throughout the end, all, every, all of it. And I'd never seen my blood look like that from a normal blood draw. And then supposedly all of these samples are, are you know, just um, for no reason. And... And then right after they did that, uh, they this woman, this doctor, one, either the male one that was behind her that I never met, or the female doctor that I saw who did the specimen sample, called for, <clears throat> called for a social worker from a psychiatric hospital. All that I had said to the doctor was, she, I think she said something about, you know, you see you've been poisoned. I said, yes, I had a couple death threats about being a rat. And then I think I got um, something I ate, I got rat poison. Because I had, and I explained this horrible bleeding that I had in the toilet bowl several times. And it, it was better, and it wasn't as bad now, but um, it had been an ex very alarming. And she said... Um, she didn't indicate that she was calling anybody, but all of a sudden had somebody knocking at the door or coming through the curtain or whatever they did and showing up with an assistant with her, it was this woman, who said, Hi, I'm so-and-so. And she said, I'd like to talk to you for a moment. And then she tells me she's from this psychiatric hospital that is in Seattle, Washington. And...
And I do know that um, an Irish American woman walked me to the hospital and defamed me as being mentally ill. Why would she just happen to be there on the corner waiting for me to stagger that direction, knowing how sick I was? Let's just hope that she doesn't work for the FBI, right? Because we don't want to find out that <clears throat> we don't want to find out that any of these people are FBI employees, do we? And so then this woman <laughs> tells me her name is Chris. And right around that time, I mean, like in the past, it had been Mary this, Mary that. Mary, Mary, Mary. Every time I had a phone call obstructed or transferred to some outlandish place that I hadn't even called, or I was being harassed by someone, they were always trying to say their name was Mary or Maria. I mean, all the time. And then after I got back from the East Coast and people were trying to call me a rat, it was Chris. It was like every time I got assigned anybody or I was being transferred to somebody, it was Chris this, Chris that, Chris, Chris, Chris. I mean, I was like, you know, someone's just picking out all of the Chris's that there are in the, um, in every agency that you can think of. And I, I remember thinking, what's the point about Chris? I can think of only three Chris's that I knew. Chris Dabney who was from Washington, D.C., that I worked for, a man. Krista Schneider, who went by Chris at that time, whose father was connected to the Department of Justice and who people supported, and they hated me. And and I guess I babysat a, a Christy Tabo way a long time ago in New Jersey. And I mean, like, that's, that's as many Chris's as I knew. And I, mean, I include the one from New Jersey because I have not come across a lot of um, different Chris's. I think, actually, I think that one was a Chris Warner, possibly, that this one guy that I met through Chris Dabney, who was a Warner. Uh, he, I believe his name was Chris. And aside from that, I did not know any Chris's. And it was just... It, like, it was one Chris after the other. So I get assigned this woman named Chris, who tells me <clears throat> that I sound like I'm paranoid schizophrenic. She said, you think that you're, poison you're being poisoned? She said, you're paranoid schizophrenic. And I said, no, I'm not. Okay, and this woman is saying this to me after I had just had the psychological evaluation in Vancouver about oh, several days ago, two weeks ago. But no results had come back at, at that time. It was like any def defamation that was happening was all just, you know, hearsay. It, there wasn't any kind of a, um, of a medical documentation to back it up. And I said, why would you say that just because I say I've, I've had a death threat that I'm paranoid or paranoid schizophrenic? I said, don't you believe that I, it's possible for me to have been threatened by someone? And by the way, this is after I'd been threatened and told that judges were involved. Okay, and I just had filed something in the Seattle courthouse about judges. And then this woman from the, from the Psychiatric Institute in Seattle is being sent to talk to me. And she said to me when I said, don't you believe it's possible that somebody has, that um, I, I could, could be in fear of my, for my life? And she said, no, I don't. And I said, well, how would you come to that conclusion if you don't even know me? I said, so you think, you think that I'm just sitting on a bench and some totally random person, and, and I just imagined, I imagined all on my own that a random person just happened to sit, sit next to me and and told me all these things, and yet it was all delusion. I was completely delusional, and nobody ever said such a thing. And she said, yes, that's what I think. And I said, are you kidding me? And I was really glad that this other woman was, was there with her, but I didn't trust any of them. 
but I said, I know what the standard is for sending somebody to a psychiatric, because she said, if you don't feel safe, because then she said, if you don't feel safe, we have a nice bed for you at our psychiatric hospital. And then she started tr implying that that's what they were going to do and, t and where they were going to take me. She started threatening me that that's where they were going to take me. First, she made it sound like it was an option. If you don't like being poisoned, um, we can find a nice padded cell for you, basically. Is first, how she worded it, or what she implied. And then it was more like she was trying to make arrangements for me to be sent there. And I said, have you seen my hospital chart notes? And she said, yes. And I said, well, did you notice that, and she said, you had no reason to come to the ER. She said, you're delusional and paranoid and um, basically made me sound like a hypochondriac. She said, you had no reason to be here but except for mental illness. And I said, I said, according to my lab results for my blood, I said my potassium is so low that anybody with that low of a potassium level would be in an emergency state and end up would be ending up in the hospital. I said the um, the potassium in my blood levels were abnorm abnormally low, and that is grounds for admission to emergency. I said so even if you don't believe that I was poisoned and you don't believe that I had internal bleeding you still have to accept the fact that I did not come to the hospital without a good cause and she said she said if your potassium is low eat some bananas I mean okay this is just like I don't even have words for some someone like this. If you if you if you're she's just been faced with the facts, and she's telling me to eat some bananas. I mean, why is she so determined to dispute the facts? They're right there in the lab result, and she wants to dispute the facts. And she was still talking about trying to send me to a psych ward. So then I have to turn on the light because. It's almost 7 o'clock and it gets dark after 7. Oh, that is really hideous, isn't it? It's very bright. Oh, it's better. It's not so glaring. I don't have a lampshade on that other one. So she was saying, if you don't like, um, if you don't like being tortured, we can give you a room in our psychiatric hospital. And then she's basically talking to this other woman about making arrangements and um, having me be admitted to this psych ward and psychiatric place. And I said to her then, I said there's documentation from my blood results from my blood lab that proves I was in the emergency room for good cause. I said, you cannot, by law, admit me to a psychiatric ward without reasonable, without grounds. And I said, you have not met that burden. And um, she knew it. And she knew that I knew it. And as soon as I said that, I said, I don't, I don't feel like killing myself. And I'm not about to kill somebody else. And there's and I came to the emergency room for a good reason. I said, you have no grounds to take me to a psychiatric hospital according to Washington law. And I said, also, I would like for you to include this diagnosis, the lab results of my abnormal potassium levels into your chart. Basically, I told, I put her in her place. And I remember the woman sitting next to her looked stuck.